Hi everyone, welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple but fairly realistic way to simulate water droplets or rain on any PBR material. It isn't designed to replace proper fluid simulations, but it does produce a convincing render of a small amount of rain or single droplets falling onto a flat surface. So let's get started. So once you have Blender open and you have the default layout, you want to delete everything except the camera. Next, you want to create two planes, one for the ground surface and one for the particle source, which is going to be the rain. So I'm just going to press Shift-D to duplicate, press G and Z and raise the particle source directly above the ground plane. You can see here now that we've scaled up each of the planes, the scale values here aren't unity. So I'm going to shift select both planes and go Control a and press Scale to set these scale values to 1. The next thing I'm going to do is set the default material for the ground plane. So I've just downloaded some texture maps from Polyhaven. I've also downloaded a HDRI for the scene, so I'm just going to apply those now. So I'm just going to drag this window over a little bit. I'm going to pull up a shader editor, click the ground plane, press New for a new material. I'm going to add a image texture and I'm going to duplicate that twice. I'm also going to go and search for a texture coordinates node. And I want to attach the UV output of the texture coordinate node into my image textures. Next, I'm going to press open here on the first image texture and I want to select the diffuse material for the first one and connect the color output into the base color of the principled BSDF. For the second one, I want to select the roughness map and connect that into the roughness. And for the last one, I'm going to select the normal map. And for these last two, I'm going to change the color space to non-color. For this last one here, you're going to want to add a bump node and connect the color output of the normal map into the height and connect the normal output into the normal of the principled BSDF. Now if we show rendered view here, you can see we have our texture applied to the ground here. Now that I have my texture applied to the ground plane, I'm going to import the HDRI that I downloaded from Polyhaven, so we've got a more realistic light source. To do that, you go over to your world properties, select the little yellow dot next to the color, and go environment texture. And now it's gone pink because it's saying it can't find a file. Then press open, and I'm just going to select one of the HDRIs that I downloaded. And you can see we now have a more realistic light source. I'm going to go to the render properties now. I'm going to go down to film and I'm going to select transparent. So it removes the background but keeps the, the influence of the light on the ground plane. And now we have the, the starting point for our ground plane. Now I'm just going to close this tab just to give myself a bit more real estate. Next we want to add a particle source to simulate the rain. So I'm going to click the top plane I'm going to go over to my particle settings, press add new particle. I'm going to increase the number of particles to about 5,000. I want the rain to start on frame one and I want it to end on frame 200. And I want the lifetime to be just enough so that it hits the ground plane and bounces back up a little bit. So I'm going to select 40. Now quickly, I just want to generate an object to simulate the appearance of a rain droplet. So I'm just going to add a new UV sphere and I'm just going to drag it over there out of the way. And let's just do apply a, let's try a glass BSDF. Let's set the index of refraction to 1.33 to simulate water. Decrease the roughness all the way to zero. And for blend mode, let's set alpha hash. You'll also want to go to your render properties and let's turn on amb ambient occlusion. Let's turn on screen space reflections leave depth of field as it is, we want to turn on motion blur as well. Now click on our particle plane again, go to our particle properties, select source, you want faces, you want the distribution to be random, click on the render pull down, go render as object, instance object we want to be the sphere, which will be our rain droplet, and let's just see how that looks. 
and you can see we've got our rain droplets which look quite big at the moment so let's go down to render and let's drop that to 0.02 just to make them a little bit smaller and you can see the rain droplets are falling through the plane so we want to add a collision modifier to stop them from falling through so if you go to your physics properties and click collision and let's go back to the start of the simulation and play that again see what happens now and you can see they're not falling through anymore you can see though they're bouncing up to quite a height again so I'm going to you can either increase the height of the particle source above the ground plane let's actually see how long it takes for the particles to hit the ground plane so it looks like it's about 38 so let's go back to our plane select that go to the particle properties let's set the lifetime equal to 37 and let's just run through that again that's looking okay at the moment we'll stick with that for the moment and we'll change it if we need to while we're here in the particle properties under the render tab press this box here that says show emitter because we don't want this plane to render in the final render I'm also going to add a slight blue tint to the color of the water droplets just to simulate the water a little bit better so I'm just going to give it this very very slight blue color also, if you want to, you could shape the sphere a little bit to make it look more like a water droplet just by dragging out the top bit here with the proportional editing tool, but I'm going to leave it as is for now. You can also use cycles to render this, but I found Eevee works quite well. Okay, now click on the ground surface and we want to add a dynamic paint object. So press dynamic paint. Select this to be type canvas because this is what we want to paint with the rain and press add canvas. Leave it on vertex and I want to run the simulation out to about 500. I'm also with the ground plane selected I'm going to subdivide it quite a few times so select it enter edit mode with the tab go edge subdivide click this little box down here and I'm going to give it about 100 subdivisions just so we've got enough resolution to simulate the water droplets and then exit out of edit mode with tab again. Over here in the dynamic paint tools I'm going to open up dry. Once the rain has stopped, we want the water on the plane to dry up. So I'm going to leave it about 500, but feel free to change that. I'm also going to turn off slow. I want the initial color to be a color and I want it to be black. Under the output tab, I'm just going to press the plus sign next to each of these because I want a paint map and a wet map to be created. Although we're only going to be using the wet map for this tutorial. Under the collision properties, I'm going to increase the damping up to about 80.85 and increase the friction to about 0.85 as well. And let's just run the simulation and just see what that looks like. And that's looking pretty good at the moment. I'm just going to minimize the collision. If you go back up here to your dynamic paint properties under the effect, we want to leave turn spread on and I'm going to decrease the spread to about let's say 0.2 so when the water droplet hits the ground plane you'll see the water seems to disperse on the plane and just sort of spread outwards from where the water droplet hit it um, and I've found these settings work quite well okay now let's go back to the particle plane I'm just going to go back to frame zero click on the particle frame and we want to add a dynamic paint modifier to this object as well except this time we want the type to be brush because this is what's going to be painting the ground plane the rain will be painting the ground plane press add brush I want the paint color to be white in this case and decrease the saturation so we've got a perfect white color we want the source to be the particle system and your particle system is just the default particle system that we've created I'm going to leave the effect solid radius at 0.2. This is essentially what determines how big the droplets are when they hit the ground plane. You can also use the particles radius to control this, but I found I got more control just using this value here. Down here, select waves and change type to obstacle. Okay, now I'll just go back to our particle properties and I'm going to go to cache and I'm going to press bake. So that'll bake our particle simulation for the rain. I'm also going to click on the ground plane here and under the dynamic paint settings I'm going to go to cache I'm also going to press bake here 
Okay, if you press render now, you can see nothing's changed yet. So we need to drag over this tab again, go to back to our shader editor. So to see the influence of the water droplets on the ground, we're gonna to have to use a vertex color node. And drop that into the shader. So if you've got the node Wrangler add-on installed, you can just click on the vertex color and press control shift and click. And that will link the color output of the vertex color to a viewer node, just so we can see what it looks like. And you wanna select the wet map here. And let's press play now and see what that looks like. So you can see the effect that rain's having on the surface here. So it looks like it's working a little bit too well. So in this case, I'm gonna go back, click on the ground plane, let's delete the bake here, then go back up to the particle plane here. I'm gonna decrease the effect solid radius. Let's try 0.05. And then press the ground plane again, and let's rebake the cache. And you can see the water droplets are a lot smaller now. If you go back to the dynamic paint brush, which is on the particle plane, you can also increase the smooth radius. So I'm just gonna double that to 0.1, click on the ground plane again, and let's delete the bake and rebake it. And that just kind of smooths out the texture a little bit. You might also wanna increase the number of subdivisions on the plane just to increase the spatial resolution so you don't get this pixelated look. Okay, let's just play this from the start again and see what it looks like. So I'm actually gonna decrease the radius of the particles again. So go back to the top plane. Let's decrease the effect solid radius down to 0.02. Let's actually try dropping the smooth radius to 0.02 as well. Click on the ground plane and let's rebake that cache again and run the simulation. So that's looking a little bit better now. So at frame 200, it stops raining, but I want to increase my end frame here to about 500, just so the simulation keeps running. And let's run the simulation again. So the rain will stop at frame 200, but you can see the water droplets are still spreading outwards. And if you wait enough time, you'll actually see the ground plane dry. So it's not actually happening quick enough, so I'm going to decrease the dry time to 300 and rebake the simulation. And the rain stopped, but the water's still spreading a little bit over the ground plane. And you can see it's drying up a lot quicker now. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. But now we want this vertex colour to influence the roughness so it makes the ground plane look wet. So to do that, let's just scroll across a little bit. So at the moment, white regions, if we were to plug this directly into the roughness input of the principal BF, BSDF, white will indicate high roughness. So that's the exact opposite of what we want, because we want it to be highly reflective to make it look like it's water. So to do that, you just add in an invert node and just plug that in the path of the vertex color. And you can see it's now flipped it now. So everywhere the water hasn't hit is now high roughness and where the water droplets have hit the ground, are now low roughness. Now we want to combine this with our existing roughness map so we include some of that realistic texture information. So I'm just going to add a math node, put that in the path of the uh, roughness map, change that to multiply, and I want to plug the color output of the invert node here into the multiply node, and then the multiply node goes into the roughness. And let's just connect up the principal BSTF back to the surface again, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, so you're starting to see a few wet areas on the map. So I'm gonna go back to the particle plane again. I'm going to increase the effect solid radius. Let's just try doubling that and see what happens. You have to rebake your simulation again. That's looking a little bit better. You really have to get your, your rotation right just so you get the light striking the rain at just the right angle. Let's go back to our camera object and let's position that for the render. So I'm just going to pan it around until I find an angle that I like. And I'm just going to increase the focal length a little bit. Let's increase it to say 100. Let's turn on depth of field as well. So that's looking okay now. Let's just run through it and see what it looks like at the moment. So 
before the rain stopped and it will start to dry out. Might just increase the particle radius again a little bit. Let's increase that to 0 0.05. Actually, let's increase the smooth radius. Let's just increase that back to 0.05. I'm also going to go back to the spread effect, so I'm just going to increase that to 0.3 as well and rebake the simulation. Okay, that's looking pretty good now. Let's go back to our camera settings and go to our depth of field. And I'm going to decrease the f-stop down to something a bit lower. Let's go to our viewports and turn on limits so we can see where it's focusing on. And I'm just going to increase the focal distance to be somewhere in the middle of the plane. And let's decrease the f-stop a little bit. Maybe about 0.6. Go back to the start of the simulation and have a look again. And that's looking pretty good now. You can see as the water droplets hit the ground they just bounce back up just a little bit. You might want to try just decreasing the lifetime of the particles as well so they don't bounce up quite high. But I'm pretty happy with that result. It's looking fairly realistic at the moment. And that's looking pretty good. So now, if you just want to render it out, go back to your render properties. You can probably decrease the number of render samples down to 32. Let's increase to high bit depth shadows. Under your screen space reflections, untick half res trace as well. Then go to your output properties. I always like to render in the same directory that my Blender file's in, so I put two forward slashes. File format, I'm just going to render it out as a video straight away. So I'm going to press FFmpeg video, encoding, change the container to MPEG4, output quality to perceptual lossless, and that's everything I have to do. Save out your Blender file and go render, render animation. And depending on your system, that can take a while. So we'll come back once the render is complete. So after a few more minor tweaks to the settings that I went through earlier, I ended up with this result, which I think is pretty good considering how simple the simulation is. I'll also point out that it might be useful sometimes to bake out the roughness map as images rather than a vertex color, if you want to render in another application, for example. Thanks again for watching this tutorial, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this or any of my other videos. Until next time, take care.